Welcome back to Hashtag Single with Jeanette Bonner. I am not a relationship expert or sex therapist. I'm just a regular New York City woman navigating the world as a single, independent feminist. Hashtag Single is about having honest conversations with other singles in today's device-obsessed culture. So I hope you'll join me on this interesting, challenging, and complex journey as we navigate the ins and outs of singledom. to Hashtag Single. I'm your host, Jeanette Bonner. Welcome to your October 101 session with a badass single female. I'm so excited to have with me today my friend, Lindsay. Lindsay, thank you for being on Hashtag Single with me. Thank you so much for having me. And Lindsay brought her friend, Chris, who has um, very eagerly volunteered to be the voice of the patriarchy. (laughs) Thank you, Chris, for being here. Patriarchy here. Thank you. (laughs) Um, So uh, Chris has already been briefed on the rules. He understands that he is here to listen to what Lindsay and I have to say. And then um, at some point we will check on with you and see uh, how your experience is reflected in whatever the hell we choose to talk about. How's that sound? Deal. Love it. All right. Love it. Lindsay. Yes, my love. First of all, I just want to congratulate you. Lindsay is in LA, guys. So we are recording this um, at noon EST, but it is 9 a.m. in LA right now. Yes, but I've been up for hours, girl. It's like (laughs) afternoon for me. I just love that you're like 9 a.m. Let's get into my single life. Like, (laughs) girl, I like, I go, when I'm single, I talk about it. Morning, noon, and night. So. <laughs> You're waking up like, <laughs> who can I talk about it with? Yeah. Um, so it's been a, like a minute since. Uh, so Lindsay and I met originally in New York, and then she she left our great, lovely city to go to LA, like many actors do. And uh, I haven't. I don't think I've seen you since. In no, person. I don't think I've seen you since we had a drunken night at some nightclub where. You know, you put your your jackets and your bags in a pile, and you just dance all night, and that's what you do. And I think that's the last time I saw you. Oh, remember that? Remember, remember those dancing? days? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad. I, I was just talking about that's like the one thing I really miss is like going dancing in this yeah. whole thing. It's I know. Not the same like dancing naked in my bedroom, you know. No, we need a night out for sure. Just have to figure out how to do that these days. Yeah, yeah, we do. So bring me up to speed because I know you were in a relationship for a good long amount of time. So tell me me where you're at. I moved to L.A. when I was 30. I felt like I was kind of just like doing the same thing. Not really. I felt like I had not outgrown LA, uh, New York. Cause I didn't know how long I would be in LA, but, um, I just felt like I needed change. So I moved here and I did a few like online dating, like a couple of dates, maybe like three dates, but I had reconnected with someone that I dated in New York and him and I were on and off for like a year and a half. Um, and that was not a great relationship, but as soon as we broke up, someone kind of swooped in And I dated him for four years. Oh, my God. Actually, like, four and a half years. So I really haven't been single in L.A. Um, So this is my first time. We broke up um, in March, right before all this craziness. wow. Uh Uh-huh. And so this is, like, my first time doing this. And it's... There's an election. There's a pandemic. I'm freezing my eggs. It's just like a really good time, you guys. I don't even know where to begin. (laughs) It's a lot happening. Well, so the thing I'm really curious about, I I mean, I dated someone for five and a half years, and it took me approximately two years to recover out of that afterwards. I can't imagine if I'd also been thrown into a pandemic, which forces people to be exceptionally lonely and yeah. kind of t- turned in and tuned in to what you're feeling more than, you know, you're not distracted by your life. So how, mm-hmm. how has that been for you trying to recover from your relationship 
in isolation? Uh, it's been so interesting. Like in a lot of ways, I was like feeling so much camaraderie because everyone was so crazy and miserable and freaked out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that I was like, well, everyone's going through something right now. So I feel not alone, even in like oh. heartbreak or grief, right? Like we were all feeling this like immense grief in the beginning of yes. COVID. And so like in the beginning, I was really surprised that I felt actually everyone's going through something so we can all kind of cry together, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it went in waves. It would be like one really good week where I felt that way. And then one week where I was like, really guys? Like, cause I had to move to out of our oh, apartment God. and I was like, can we just have like a pandemic or a breakup or a move. Can I, do we have to do these things all at once? So there were times where it was like overwhelming, but I have to say overall, because we all got into this, like, well, I did. I think some people have been alone, alone, but I like leaned on my pod, spent every day at my pods. Like when we had riots here, I was at my pod. Like I felt really, really supported. Um, mm. and I feel like people had the time to do that because of COVID that I actually felt, I never felt really lonely, which was really nice. That, I mean, that's so wonderful that you have that. And I think that's so interesting that you say that, like normally when we're going through a breakup, it's really child. I, I remember that feeling of like, I need to talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. And my, my friends always wanting to be like, um, but let's like move on. Let's, right. let's talk about something else. So they were thinking in trying to help me, like, what if we did something else and it would distract you from your loneliness? Yeah. Um, but by us just like not having activities to do or life or things like your friends are really there to concentrate on how you're feeling. You know, I, my pod is very, everyone's very different. So I have a, li a really good listener in my pod that will let me just like, cry and do what I need to do. I have someone in my pod that's like, look, this is your crying chair. Go sit in your crying chair. I can't hear you cry anymore. You know, like, and then I have, you know, someone in my pod that's like, um, let's distract you and do something else. So I think I got a little bit of everything from the different dynamics of my pod, which has been yeah. really great. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, the best, the easiest way to get over someone is to like get under someone or at least go to a bar yes. and make out with a stranger and feel like you're sexy again or whatever. Yeah. That's been real difficult, but I thank God started therapy like a month before COVID. And so my therapist has been amazing at like, she made me get online and start doing hinge and bumble and like oh. she's been really encouraging in that way and i don't think i would be doing that if it wasn't for her so like therapy's been really helpful for me as well through all of this i'm just did you never have an impulse to like be like this is i need to go back to that person or to reach out or to lean on them for emotional support my ex yeah no, because what was missing was the emotional support. So like, oh. I, we had like a really healthy, lovely relationship and I'm so grateful for so many ways. But what, what I was shown in the last few months of our relationship and with our breakup is that he doesn't have the tools or the skills. And so even if we rebounded or whatever, like I just, I think when you're my age, you don't really fuck around anymore. And it's mm -hmm. like... I tried, I texted, I did everything that I felt like I could do to like fix our relationship. But when I saw that he didn't have the tools and wasn't equipped to do that himself, like I just knew I had to rely on my friends, you know, like I just knew that he wasn't going to be the one that was going to help me do it. I think that's really brave of you. I mean, I think that's, first of all, just having the inner knowledge and strength and maturity to ID that right off the bat is really hard. But I think also there's that, there was that temptation. Listen, not just even if you broke up with someone in March, like I feel like a lot of people reached back out to their exes. Yeah. I heard from my freaking ex. I was like, like out of nowhere. And he is in a relationship. He's about to have a baby. He said he was just checking in on me, but I was like, whoa, that was real. That whole yeah. like everybody was sort of like, well, how bad was it? 
because <laughs> we were right. lonely, you right. know? Yeah, don't get me wrong. There were a lot of scathing emails back and forth for a few months, but something happened in, like, June that he just said something to me that I knew. I was like, this is not my person. And from June 1st till now, like, we haven't spoken to each other, and we'll be fine. Like, we'll get to a point where we will. We just need some time. But, like, yeah. You know, I think you get to a breaking point with someone. You're like, oh, this isn't going to fix itself. And this person isn't willing to fix it. And I'm in therapy and he's not. And, like, I'm working on my shit and he's not. So you just have to, like, let it go. I'm not 20, you know. Like, I'm not – I got to, like, move on and find something that's right for me. And so I'm proud of myself for, like, moving forward. And, like, even with the online dating, this is the first time I'm – a healthy adult not going to bars and drinking and getting wasted and having fun and these flings like I feel like this is the first time I'm dating as an adult so it's definitely been like a very interesting experience yes and I listen I want to commend you as well I think like it takes so much knowledge of yourself and like I said so much strength and maturity and independence to know yourself enough to walk away from something that's not serving you so Thank you are you. awesome. You are fire. Thank I, you. I give you. I give you all the love and all the props and all all of that. All, <laughs> all of womankind is behind you right now, girl. We get you. We get you. So, okay. So, talk to me about what it's been like joining the freaking app scene in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, okay. Honestly, it hasn't been that bad. I hate you. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You can. <laughs> no, I Tell just had, I just had an experience that made me feel sad and like, I definitely am disappointed. So we'll get into it. But like overall, I think a, you're relatively sober compared to like when you would meet dudes at bars. Yes. So like what I'm doing is a phone call or a video date before we even think about getting in person together. Good. So then that weeds out already like, nope, not happening. There's not a spark. Then I go on like a hike date with them or a walk and, you know, see if there's like a vibe. And then with this one guy in particular, I was really into him and he seemed really into me. So we went and got tested for each other because... Wait, Corona or STDs? Corona because... (laughs) We went through a period here where you couldn't be inside with somebody because of coronavirus, but you couldn't be outside with somebody because of the fires. Wow, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. So I was like, well, I want to spend time with this person, but I can't breathe outside. So he needs to come to my house or I need to go to his house. How are we going to do this? So we went and got tested for each other. And we dated for about a month, and it was great. We were doing, like, hikes and walks. He's not comfortable doing restaurants, and I'm not doing restaurants really either. So we were just doing, like, outside hangs and, like, you know, sexy time inside stuff. Um, And then he kind of ghosted me, and it was a bummer. No! Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I... He didn't quite ghost me. I, I'm. This is where, like, the growth is, like... He canceled on me last minute, and it was via text, and I just said, like, hey, listen, totally understand things come up, but, like, we just hooked up on Wednesday, and you're canceling last minute the next time we're hanging out. Like, you could have called me and, like, communicated Mm -hmm. with me what's going on. I felt like text was a little tacky, and I, like, stood up for myself, and then I said, I'm sensing a little distance from you, so I'm going to take a beat and take a step back. And then he called me, and we chatted. And he was like, no, like, da 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 and started spiraling into this thing about how he just got out of a thing. And I was like, listen, I totally get it. I just got out of a thing, too. I'm going to take a beat. He's like, okay, cool. Let's, like, talk soon. And then I never heard from him again. So I'm, like, I'm weeding him out pretty fast. You know what I mean? Good girl. Good yeah. girl. So, you know, it was a bruise to the ego. It was a bummer. But, like, he ticked off a lot of boxes. And we had great chemistry, great conversation. Like, things that he had that my ex didn't have that I have a lot of hope that it's out there on apps that is a match. You know? What app did you meet him on? I've had all of my dates so far off of Hinge. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm I'm down to like hinge and okay cupid, but I got ex- hinge exhausted because mm. I was getting the same thing that I was getting on all the apps, which is that people start conversations and they don't finish them. And yes. like it's just like I'm like I it's cool that you like my photo, but if you don't actually want to talk to me, like I'm just exhausted by it. So I I'm know. happy to hear that you're actually meeting people that want to meet up. I haven't met anyone yet that's like Go, has gone any further but I have to say I've met really nice people and my trick is I get off the app like as soon as humanly possible um, yeah. I'm like here's my number this is fun banter like call me or text me let's figure out a video time to hang you know so I try to get off the app because I feel like we all kind of die on that app we do um, we die we die on the app I, I'm on Bumble too but like I haven't really had any luck on Bumble so Hinge has been the best so far, so we'll see. That's good. Are you? Yeah. So you're looking, even though you just got out of a long-term relationship, are you looking right now for another long-term relationship? Um, to be 100% honest, my attachment patterns, yes, of course I'm looking for a relationship. But what I'm working on is I've never dated. I've never Mm. dated multiple people at a time, which is nearly impossible during a pandemic. But the idea of just hanging out with this person because they're fun and cool and seeing what you like about them doesn't mean you have to like be obsessed with this person or attached to this person. That's kind of what I'm working on. So like, of course, I want to meet someone that I'm going to have a future with and I don't want to waste my time. But I'm also trying to figure out like what works for me because I think I was in my last relationship too long because it was nice and sweet and lovely yeah. in a lot of ways, but we just didn't have enough in common and I needed to recognize that a lot sooner. So, you know, just working on things and seeing what I like and don't like and trying new things. And um, But yeah, I'm really open. Like I... I feel really open to meeting someone um, and just taking it slow with that person, you know? Yeah. And there's nothing. I'm just, I was just curious and I think it's fabulous that you're just sort of, I love the idea of dating to figure out yourself. Yeah. Like, like I'm doing this to try to figure out what works for me and like what I'm looking for. I, I have learned so much about what my hell knows are in dating mm-hmm. and how I want to be treated and how I want to be communicated with yeah and like what my dating ceiling is and what my dating basement is do you know what I mean when I say that yeah yeah like you're, yeah okay because this kid texted not text me message me and um I'm using Facebook dating which we can get into if you want but I just just I was like I'm tired of everything I'm trying something new and this guy in Facebook dating, you set your own parameters, but whoever likes you, you can see it. So if I say, I don't want to talk to people, I'm, if my window is like 30 to 45, mm. but a guy sees my picture because his window is whatever includes me and he likes me, I can see it. So this guy like liked me and he was 26 Ooh. and I was like, I wrote him and I was like, you are in my, you are beyond my age basement. Yeah. But, but I'm like, I'll uh, letting you know that up front and then we could keep talking if you want. Well, but I'm not going to take this seriously is what I was basically saying. This guy on Bumble yesterday was so cute and looked so sweet and he had all these great prompts and stuff. But he said on his profile that he was apolitical. And instead of like ignoring him, I wrote him and said, hey, I think we have a lot in common, but unfortunately I'm looking for someone who cares about politics, especially right now. And like, you know, just like being loud about, so he, I, I feel like people need to hear why, cause he like extended our match. And I'm like, instead mm-hmm. of ignoring him, I want him to know why, because you should care about politics right now. And you should know that women, Some women want that, and that's why you're being rejected, not because of anything else. You know, like, I just have been really upfront and, like, honest about how I approach things. And it's so funny because, like, the last guy that kind of ghosted me, he, like, didn't text enough. And it was, like, this weird thing. And I was, like, is he putting distance between us? Because then when I'm with him, he's really hot. And then when I'm not, he's really cold. And I was, like, trying to figure it out. And then the next date I went on with someone else, at the end of the date, he was, like, 
how do you feel about texting? Like, I don't want to text you too much, but I don't want to text you not enough. Like, oh, wow. what kind of a texture are you? And I'm like, I looked at him and I was like, that's a great question that you should always ask women on a date. Like some people, everyone's different. Like everyone, you know, I like a little text here and there to see you're thinking of me or whatever. But like, how do they know that if they're not big texters? You know what I mean? So I just thought that, that was really interesting just these little things that I'm like learning about men and relationships, you know, and how clever it is to actually just fucking use your words and communicate. Yeah. That came up with me recently where this, I met with this guy, we had a little FaceTime date and the next day, whatever I was working and, um, I texted him that night. I don't remember what about, but he was like, um, I was looking forward to hearing from you today and was bummed that I didn't hear from you. And I was like, Whoa, it has been a day since our FaceTime date. I was Mm. like, that's, um, and I said, I was like, uh, just letting you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy during the day with projects. I'm not able to text you every single day. And yeah. he was like, I think you're taking this way too seriously. And I was like, no, I'm just letting you know how it's going to be. Because if you want me to text you every day, let's end this now. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to freaking happen. And when I connect with someone, I mean, I can't say that after one face time date but like when I connect with someone I do want to hear from them in the morning like good morning so like everyone's preferences are different you know so I'm just like really learning a lot and like I was so hesitant to go online and I was like too soon too soon this is horrible but I have to say like I've already learned so much and I've only seen three people in person so considering you started in June, that's like better than what I've had, like one FaceTime date and one in-person date. That's like pretty impressive, Lindsay. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think this is just because I'm fresh meat, you know, they probably no, smell No, no, really what it is, is that you come in with fresh energy. So right. I'm coming in, I've always, I've been told this by dating coaches and therapists, like I'm, what I'm doing, unfortunately, I can't undo it, but I'm bringing the weight of 10 years of being single mm. into all, so all of these interactions, it takes more energy to tell me that you're not one of those guys. Right. Because it's really, I know I'm not supposed to like bring the old story into the new story, but it's so hard when you're like, you're how do dating coaches put it they say you're looking to eliminate people and Mm. so women I think especially look for red flags because there's a lot of fucking creepers on this thing yeah a lot of a-holes so like you're almost waiting for the bottom to drop out like you have to prove to me that you're going to be a good guy as opposed to me just like letting it organically happen do you know what I mean a hundred percent a hundred like you're you're kind of like working upstream yeah You know, and it all is experience. It's like, uh, the guy really hurt my feelings last week. I picked myself up. This is a better week, right? Like, but, you know, that was a lesson to me of like, just because he's telling you he wants to hang out with you every five seconds and wants to take you camping and wants to do all these things, don't fall for it yet. Like, let him prove to you, let him show you through his actions that he's available, not just tell you, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. that's what I learned from that experience. And, like, this guy I went out with this weekend, like, he's sober and had, like, a drinking problem a long time ago. And, like, I, you know, have some of that in my family. So, in a lot of ways, I can really relate to him and I would do well with someone sober. But, like, if I have a glass of wine with him on our date on Thursday night, how's that going to go? You know, things like that. Like, I'm just very curious and open it open to, like, figuring all of it out, you know? Yeah, and I love the approach of, like, maybe you're not even going on dates to, like, see if you want to actually date the guy. But to use the date to inform you about what you are looking for. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you're like, what can I, I love the idea of like, well, what can I gain from that date that I had on Saturday? What does that teach me about what my triggers are or what my deal breakers are or what I don't want? Yeah. Like what, a, what a great approach to dating. Well, I feel that way about my long relationships when it, you know, I, you think of them as a failure. It's really sad. It fucking sucks. But then when you have a little clarity or your heart's a little less broken, it's like, what did I learn from this person? What did I get out of that relationship? Like 
that's how I always see them. Even the really toxic ones, like the guy before the last guy I dated, like I found out he was cheating on me for a really long time. And it's like, oh, I needed to trust all my little instincts. Like that's what I learned from that. Like trust yourself, trust that you can't trust like what a narcissist looks like and is, you know? So like, I kind of feel like I look at that even in my long relationships, but that is mm. something I'm like, actively working on right now is like what do I want and what are the qualities of these people like what fits and what doesn't and what's a deal breaker and what's not and so that's definitely yeah and like I give a lot when I'm in a relationship and so I'm trying to be less accommodating and I'm trying to like be more of an advocate for myself girl you are like the poster child of a you know, well acclimated adult who is just like, <laughs> like, <clears throat> like using dating for herself and like not going to let it affect her in sort of like any kind of negative emotional way. Like, well, like, I, talk to me in six months and we'll see how my energy <laughs> and my I'm, vibe is. I'm very envious. I'm like, <laughs> I want to feel that way about dating. Yeah. Um, wait, what are your deal breakers? I'm so curious. Can you share them? Um, well, I don't know if I have like a list, but I will say right now, like my last partner, he didn't really care about politics. And I know he was a good person. And like, look, I don't need to talk about Trump all day, every day, but you have to care about- You have to have an opinion. You yes. have to care about what's going on. So like anyone on the dating apps that I see, um, apolitical or even moderate, I'm just like, I just don't think we're gonna get there. Like, I just don't mm. think that we're going to be a match. So, like, that's something that I definitely... And then my other ones are really judgmental and shitty, but it's just something that I... Um, I'm just going strictly dating apps right now, and what I don't swipe for is, like, yeah. I am an actor and a personal trainer, and I swipe left on actors and personal trainers. Yes, so like, 100%. That's I, not, that's not uh, shallow or superficial. I agree with you, too. There's, like... I believe there's like, you know, that too many chefs in the kitchen mentality, like an, an actor dating an actor is just like fire and fire. Yeah. And there's a lot of times during my self tapes and auditions that I wish my ex was an actor to like help me. And I see my friends that create with their partners and there's something really magical about that. But there, it's also uh, when I've dated comedians or actors, it's been really hard. And the personal training thing is like that was a hobby that turned into a survival job and it's something that makes me feel really good but I don't need to like end up with a guy who like owns a gym and like gym people are like really serious about it and I know it's super judgmental because that's what I do for a living but it's just I don't know it's just a thing no I think there's there's something to be said for having balance also like if 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 you are a personal trainer and you date someone who's a personal trainer, then your life is going to be about personal. Yeah, training. and I need a you creative know? life. So like, I kind of try to go for people that are creative in other ways. There's yeah. a lot of cameraman on Hinge. <laughs> Send it my way. I'm like my friend Jessica meets all these filmmakers, and I'm like, why do I not match with filmmakers? Like, I love the idea of someone who's in my industry but mm -hmm. is not like a little like a step away from me because you you would understand the schedule, you understand the language, you can talk about art right. in a passionate way. Um, I can imagine LA is inundated yeah. with a lot of filmmakers. Out of my three guys that I've seen in person, two of them were cameramen. So there's a lot yeah. of those going around. <laughs> well, can you, I can't even, it's a crazy schedule. I think about that all the time. Like if you're on a, a film, like you're out 30, 40, well in pre-corona, but 30, 45 days, mm -hmm. it's impossible to have a relationship. Or even if you're on set, like a 12, 14 hour day and you're on camera the whole time, you're not checking your phone like hey baby yeah. how's your day going like that's well that's really tough one thing I learned from my last relationship so speaking of deal breakers is he was married to his job and that too and I the guys that I've uh been talking to I have to hear them say something like there's a work-life balance like I like to have my free time which is why I'm not on one tv show I do freelance gigs like there's got to be like a work-life balance I cannot be with somebody who's married to their job because I just did it for almost five years yeah and it's just never gonna work you know I I I've never had a motherly instinct like I want to have kids I'm freezing my eggs so I can hopefully have a family one day but like 
I need a partner that's like a hundred percent going to help me because I'm not like, I just want to be a stay at home wife. Like I've never been like that or a stay at home mom. Like I've never been like that. So that's something I look for too. Like I need to be with someone that wants a family just as bad and wants like a family just as much as they want their job, you know? Absolutely. When did you decide to freeze your eggs? It was something I was even thinking about with my last partner because I'm not ready to like have kids and I'm older and I was just like, oh, like it feels like a lot of pressure. So I, I went and initially went with him and like talked about it with him. Um, but then when we broke up, I was like, this is the perfect time to do this. And it's cheaper because of COVID ladies. Is it really? There's like a discount. There's a COVID discount. It's like (laughs) $3,000 cheaper. Um, Whoa, that's huge. So I just was like, this is, this is the universe telling me to do it. So I'm just doing it. Why is it? Why? I don't understand the reason, but I just think it's not like a life or death thing for people. So they're probably like holding off and to see what happens with COVID. And so it's, they probably need more people to do it, you know? Mm. So Mm. they quoted me like $3,000 cheaper when I re, when I got all my quotes again, I was like, Oh, well I'm definitely doing this. Like, yeah. And how old are you? I'm 37. Okay. Bravo. My, my friend Allison froze her eggs around that time and then like three years later got them out again I was like oh, okay was that you know she's like well you know it's one of those things because you're paying every year to have right. them stored um but she's like really what it was for her is when she made the decision to freeze them her brain was already thinking when 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 am I you know what I mean it's like yeah. no longer out of sight out of mind it constantly was when am I going to get them and because she was constantly thinking about it she was finally ready to like just be like I'm going to have a donor baby um when she reached 41 she was like I'm doing it yeah I don't I don't know how I feel about that I just know that in all the research that I've done there's not enough research to know if it even will get me pregnant one day but what I feel like from the women that I've talked to in my life they're like if you can't get pregnant are you gonna regret it and I'm like yeah and they're like well then do it (laughs) and so I'm like all right I'm gonna do it like that's kind of where we're at you know um because a lot of women don't wind up using them. They get pregnant naturally. So there's not enough evidence that it's actually even a thing. Right. Um, so it's just kind of like, it's, I don't want to be in a rush. I don't want to think about it. I wish I was a dude so I didn't have to think about it. So it's a way of like taking a little bit of that power back. Even if they never do anything, at least I could like breathe easy knowing that I did something towards that, you know? So let me ask you a hypothetical since mm-hmm. going on the theme of like being overly communicative with what you want and what works for you. Yes. Do you ever envision a scenario where you would bring that up to a date? Oh, I tell them on the first date what I'm doing. Do you really? Yeah, because how does if, that come up? If we get naked together, they're gonna see bruises all over my body. They're gonna I'm gonna gain weight, I'm gonna act crazy because of the hormones. So what I typically do is like the first guy brought up, um, his friend was going through IVF and I was like, well, this is a perfect segue. Um, the second person, um, asked me if I want it. Well, both the second and third, the, the, do you want kids question comes up and it's basically my answer is like, I do, but I don't want them right now. And that's why this month I'm freezing my eggs. So, Hey, Uh okay. Yeah. I just, I am at a point where I am super forthcoming about everything because if that freaks them out, because if I were a dude, I'd be like, great. She wants more time. I want more time. Like this is going to buy us more time. So it wouldn't freak me out if I found out someone was doing that. Um, and I think it's a great way to weed out a guy who isn't going to be sensitive to women and what they Exactly. I was going to say, you can tell everything probably by their response to you just mentioning it. Oh, yeah. I mean, the last guy I went out with this weekend wanted a play-by-play of, like, the entire procedure (laughs) and, like, all the steps and everything. And I was like, great, let's get into it, you know? Wow. If it it freaks him out, I really, like, I, great. Then I weeded that one out. No, it tells you everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I tell them everything. Give me, um, before we head over to Chris, give me one more deal breaker for you and please let it be as superficial as possible. And I'll share you one of mine. Well, my dad has a full head of hair and everyone in my family has a full head of like Italian hair until the day they die. 
So I'm not typically attracted pe to people with shaved heads or that are going bald. And like, there's a lot of sexy bald dudes. Like they're, they're sexy to me, but it's like my eye goes towards a full head of hair. Cause that's just the men in my life have a full yeah. head of hair. And if they don't snore, like dude slept over the last dude and he didn't snore. And I was like, I think I need to marry this person. <laughs> Um, because that is so real. Like men don't even realize you're like, Oh God, can I spend the rest of my life with this? Yes. Person? No, no, I, I cannot. Like, I'm sorry. He has a full head of hair and he doesn't snore. Like sign me the fuck up. <laughs> so those are like my shallow things. That's so funny. I, um, and this is probably very Freudian as well. Like speaking of family and what you're used to, I really am not attracted to guys with beards and like the bigger beard, mm. the worse it is. And I know that's really trendy right now, especially with like Corona people being inside, but I just do not want to kiss like a mouthful of hair. That's and fine. That's my fine. dad. My dad had a beard until mm. I was 10 mm -hmm. and then he shaved it cause it was going gray and like family lore is that I would not talk to my dad for like three days because he looks like a different person. That's hilarious. And so I think there's something in there that is now like, no, can't like, I don't like beards. Can't do beards. I don't know. Yeah. But that, and then also just like, if you have a single, I'm talking one car selfie, I'm motherfucking out of there. I don't love car selfies. And if, so, I oh, oh I have a big one. I have a big one. Tell if me. someone says on their profile, like, doesn't looking for someone who doesn't take life too seriously. I'm like, bye. Like really? I, yeah. Cause I'm a really fun, funny person, but I take my life very seriously. I take my friends seriously. I take my job seriously. I'm like, I don't take my life too seriously. It's just like, there's something about it that I'm like, well, maybe you should. <laughs> that's a, that's a really good point. I think when guys say that, Chris can certainly pipe in here if he wants to, but I think when guys say that they want someone who's like fun and spontaneous, but they don't realize that like the women who are, who can be fun and spontaneous have their shit together. Yeah. Like, it's sort of like I've got my stuff so organized. Now I can put it away and I can relax and have a good time. I want you know? someone that has their shit together. And if you yes. say that, it makes me feel like you're just like a Peter Pan, you know? Mm. Oh yes. And there's tons of those. A hundred percent. Yeah, we've so, dated all of them. That's so crazy. <laughs> shall we? Um, shall we? Shall we check in with Chris? And yes. see what His experience has been. Chris, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. How's it, how's it been for you listening into this this sesh? You know, I'm going to be honest. I feel super blessed that I just got to check out the other players. Uh, isn't like it interesting? Playbook? That's what everyone said Listen, to me. They were like, wow, I never heard the female perspective on this shit before. Well, and maybe we've heard the female perspective, but like getting to listen for a half an hour to two like independent, strong, incredible women talk about dating and talk about men and talk about just like what they're thinking about is is really helpful like i i took so i have three pages of notes <laughs> i don't oh my god take a picture it didn't happen oh my god i love chris harbour so much. please blog about it um tell, uh, what came up for you tell me since you have three pages of notes what came up for you tell me well i think the biggest one that i so appreciate is when um lindsay and lindsay and i had known each other since college um when she said giving feedback and standing up for herself and being herself early on in the dating, like first yeah. date, second date, third date, to me, that is everything. And I have struggled as a guy to come out fully clean about who I am, what I think about yeah. who, where my head is at. Cause it's hard. Cause we want the girl to like us and, and we're scared that if we come out kind of early with this is who we are, Mm -hmm. um that they're just gonna just be like i don't want that but that's what we that's what we want we need that yeah well, you, you bring up you bring up a really good point and this has come up in the podcast multiple times is that most of us are not transparent with what we want what turns us on like how we feel about xyz because of fear you know the fear of rejection yeah. is ever present on both yeah. sides but you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not communicative about uh, who you are and what you're looking for, for fear of rejection, because ultimately the whole point of this is for us to get what we want out of it. So it's this dichotomy of like, well, if maybe if I don't mention that that bothers me, then they'll like me. But yeah. you see the irony there is that they can't like you because you weren't 
yourself honest and exactly you weren't honest in yourself in the first place yeah do you feel chris do you feel like you struggle with um being clear about what you want with on app are you dating on apps so i Lindsay said earlier in the podcast that i just i'm tired of everything and i want to try something new when it came to apps and i had the same revelation at the beginning of this year yeah same because i because i hated the app game i hated the culture I hated the hookup culture. I hated like you either are on a date seeing if this is your person or you're not. There's right. no in between time to get to know somebody. And I was so sick of it. So I tried this app that's a little more out there. It's called I think it's called like Meet Mindful or Mindful Meeting or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and es- yeah. And, and and essentially people are just way more upfront about like kind of their spiritual side. The thing that I was closeted about for a long time is my spirituality. Like I am, I'm a, I spend the first hour of my day, like in meditation and prayer and gratitude. And that's a scary thing for me to say to somebody early on, because they're going to think I'm an insane religious person, which I'm not, or maybe I am, I don't know. But, um, (laughs) but, But so like, so finding people who, who are okay with that earlier, my instinct is like, maybe this meet mindful thing would be better. So that's Mm. kind of my app game right now how how is it working for you so uh a lot of vegans and yogis apparently Mm -hmm. on meet Mm -hmm. mindful um and and a lot of people who um who yeah pretty quickly you're just like yeah this is a very obvious no on bumble you're like maybe no on meet mindful you're like yeah you can tell quickly like definitely not (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um and but what's interesting is this this girl messaged me about a month ago and um she was like i have been asking and praying for a girl who is like independent career oriented just badass up front you know all the things that you that you two have been talking that about. Lindsay and i are obviously yeah that Lindsay and you are. <laughs> i have been actively seeking and having a hard time like where do these where do these power women hang out where are they I, I couldn't find them and I, and I want to be a part of, a, I want my companion to be a power woman, you know, yeah. um, hard to find. So at any rate, um, I, I started messaging this, this girl and she has like a coaching business and she's just extremely cool, very upfront, spiritual, um, you know, and, and so, you know, who knows super early, but but I, I have someone that I'm pretty excited Yay, about. Yay! I love Snaps. that. Who knows? Snaps. I love that, that that sort of resonated with you. I think that it resonated with me a lot. Just um, when you talked about that, Lindsay, I was just like, well, I'm not good at being upfront and forthcoming either because you're right, Chris. It's like, it's scary. And you don't want people, someone to think that you're, as you said, Lindsay, being judgmental. So like the yeah. minute you say, listen, um, I just want to let you know upfront, I'm X, Y, Z, that can be seen as an aggressive energy from mm-hmm. women and that can be seen as a turnoff. So there's this nuance that you have to play of being like, no, I'm a cool chick who just wants to like get to know you, but I also just need to fucking let you know what I need. You yeah. know what I mean? They're going to figure it out at some point anyway. So you may as yeah. well like not waste anyone's time, you know, but it's, it's easier, it's easier said than done. And I definitely have to work on it. So what else came up for you? I, I think I just felt my heart break and remend about ten times during your conversation. Oh, why? Because the two of you are are just being so brave and so authentic, and like here we all are, these little people just trotting around this planet, and we want to feel connected to someone in a mm-hmm. meaningful way, and it's fucking hard. And and listening to the two of you, just kind of like boldly explain, kind of this is what it feels like. And when this guy did this, this is how it made me feel. I would feel my heart break. And then when the two of you sort of have a moment where you connect and bond over something that, you know, something that did go well, feedback that was received, hopefully by a guy in a more elevated, meaningful, evolved way, I was like, all right, so so there are dudes out there. There are girls out there. Um, but yeah, just a lot of breaking yeah. and mending as I listen to you too. Oh, Chris. 
Don't you want to marry Chris? I want to marry Chris. <laughs> I wish we were in the same room right now so bad. Um, this is You're such a lovely human being. Um, that I mean, I feel the same way. Like when you meet someone who's a genuine person with a, a, a big heart, you're like, it's hard to hear that they're struggling with dating. Like it's shitty. You're like, it's not yeah. fair. Like why, why are people treating you like that? Especially when they're your friends that you guys have known for each other a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think we all genuinely want something good for people that we believe in. Um, but I mean, the, like one of the reasons I started this podcast because I was like, people need to know like why this isn't working. It's not just like, oh, she's struggling dating. Like yeah. the culture, as you said, Chris, around app dating is so broken. And I just wanted to get women together. Yeah. And like talk about like, here's what I need and this is what I'm not getting. Um, But wait, I have another question for you. So, you know, Lindsay and I were talking about kind of our our red flags or our deal breakers or the the concept of kind of swimming upstream. Like you have to um, get rid of more. You have to reject more often than you accept. Do you experience that at all? You have to reject more often than you accept. Like you're looking for reasons to disqualify people instead of looking for reasons to qualify people. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> God, just so the thing that resonated with me a lot is when Lindsay talked about healthy dating as an adult. Um, and I think that feeds in because if we're going to be really open here, if we're going to be really honest, yes, there are some obvious disqualifiers. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to date a Trump fan. It's not going to happen. Lindsay said, we're not going to get there. We're not going to get there. It's not going to happen. For instance, here's a strange one. And I'm going to get a lot of shit for saying this, but like I dated a girl for a while who just had this like very strange quirk where when she would like reach for her wine glass, she would like find the wine glass with her tongue and I found it just... <laughs> like those girls that do that with the Starbucks straw. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like okay. not attractive. Yes. It was sort of like, like sort of like um, maybe some, like a bat would like reach out with sonar with his tongue. Like I think oh, that. Oh my God. That, but that was, but that was really hard for me to, to get around that. It's like, does she look for everything with her tongue? I don't know. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm really not trying to be mean. And we, we dated for a while and she was lovely. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actively trying not to have so many stupid male disqualifiers because it's not fair. Yeah. And here I am battling my own DNA against this. Right. But listen, it, I'm here to tell you, like, it is fair. Like, this is what Lindsay and I are saying is like, like, all of us have little things that are going to piss us off. And like, yeah, your part of you is like, I'm a terrible human because I judge that person for using her tongue to drink her wine. But at the same time, like all that tells you is that I, I'm not going to be able to form a, a future with this person long term. And there's not I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, don't apologize for or if you that did. Thing. Yeah. Or if you did see yourself having a future with them, then you would say like Alex would call me out on things like you would say like. You, what are you, a giraffe? Like, hello, like, stop fighting your wine glass with your tongue. Like, <laughs> you would make a joke out of it if you really saw a future with that person. Like, there's going to be right. many quirks from the people in our lives that we want to love and spend time with. So, like, you would have, that wouldn't be the thing that was made or break your relationship, you know? So, like, right. you know, you find a way to, like, in a funny way say, like, when you do that, you're ridiculous. You know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, and if they respond positively, you would know, okay, we got this. Yeah. I right. think at the end of the day, like, all of it is just information. Go with your gut. As Lindsay said a million times, like, advocate for yourself and communicate what you desire. And, I mean, it, it sounds so fucking easy, and I'm, I'm sure not doing it myself. But, like, honestly, if we could all just abide by those very simple rules, like, we would be doing this a lot better, you know? Yeah, and to and to also, like, what I'm working on now is, like, the guy ghosted me because he hasn't done the work yet to deal with conflict right. and how to deal yep. with communication. It has sure. nothing to do with me. He liked me and got freaked out because he doesn't know how to deal with his feelings. And, like, right. before maybe I would have been, like, 
what did I do? What did I say? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I didn't do any of that because I know with experience now that like a lot of this shit has nothing to do with me at all. You know? Yes. Yes. And, 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 and my heart, my heart like soared a little bit, Linz, when you were talking about, um, giving feedback to that guy, because I know it was upsetting that he kind of went away after that, but, but I just wanted to reach out and be like, but but you will find more evolved emotionally yeah. evolved men by yeah. doing that right so, so a, a quick example the other night i was out with this girl and i was being all angsty about like the future and we don't have we have no idea and i don't even know what it, it is yet and she goes if you're going to be an anxious little bitch about what's going to happen to us like this is never going to work and my mouth just dropped and I think she scored like a hundred points in my heart because she is totally right. Yeah. If we can't have fun in that present moment, by the way, eating a wonderful dinner outdoors overlooking the Hudson River, if, if I can't enjoy that and I'm thinking about what if she likes somebody else, what if I ever see her with somebody else, mm. then I'm going to destroy this wonderful moment and any potential because I'm just going to be worried about the future all the time. Yeah. I love that. I love her. Wow. Get her on the podcast, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, let us know what happens with her. Yeah, we want to know. Yeah. I totally will. And can I ask a quick question while, I, while I'm here? Yeah. While I have you two ladies? Yeah. Um, so, so you all brought up some like plus ones that guys can do early on that had never occurred to me. For instance, one of my notes is ask this girl what is too, too little or too much texting for her. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that I was good. I love that you said that. Mm-hmm. It never occurred to me, and that's wonderful. Yeah. Are there other things for the dudes listening, if there are dudes listening, what are the other little, like, mindful touch points that we can do, especially early on, where you all would be like, okay, this is good. Like, like what are the things that we could do? What are things? For me, huge, 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 huge is make a plan. The most non-sexy thing in the world is when a dude is like, I don't know, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Like, it's like, we feel really special when a guy, and they don't have to pay for everything, and they don't have to, like, do all the work, but, like, have an idea up your sleeve, like... Oh, if that doesn't work out, I have another idea up my sleeve. That's like the hottest thing in the world. Or just right. asking. I'm like, I have so many guys right now where I was like, we're texting and I'm finally like, so do you want to meet in person? And this guy actually wrote back, I was waiting for your lead. Mm. And I wrote back, fortune favors the bold. Mm. Like, show me you're mm-hmm. confident and say, Jeanette, it's been great getting to know you. I would love to meet you. Are you free on Friday night? Like, yeah. why is everyone so afraid to just ask people out now? And I, I mean, I know the answer is that fear of rejection, but like, don't wait for me to give you permission to ask me if you want to see me. Got it. Yeah, go for it. She, if she's into you, you'll know it. And she will want you to be like, what are you doing Saturday? Like, let's make a plan, you know? But it's so yeah. much, like you said, it's so much sexier when a guy it can just say, I think you're really cool and I would love to meet you. Let's go out this weekend. Just yeah. just just being straightforward and honest instead of this whole like, as you said, Lindsay, this like coy like, so um, what are you doing this weekend? Right. I'm tired of that, too. And one last thing, because I'm a huge advocate for this and this I'm so tired of, of the lack of this in our culture. Flirting, flirting, flirting. Mm hmm. No one fucking flirts anymore. It's just a like, let's get to be friends and then maybe we'll sleep together. But oh, um, I miss a good, I miss a good flirt. No, you need yep. the banter for sure. Yes, some give me some wit and I'm yours mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. Taking notes, taking, taking notes. notes. I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give it to the guys. I love, I love Chris so much. You're like gonna be the mascot of hashtag Ziggle. <laughs> um, you guys, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I wish we could like, I wish we were in a bar and we could just like keep Same. talking forever and ever. Um, maybe we'll do a little follow up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. In like six months or so, that'd be a fun idea. Um, but I'm so grateful to uh, you, Lindsay for saying yes to me even though you just recently became single and Chris of course uh, saying yes to um, this sort of feminist podcast you had probably no idea what it was until Lindsay talked about it so thank you both so much for being here thank truly. you for having us and Chris my offer still stands if you want to get married <laughs> will you Lindsay. take two women at one time <laughs> 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 um, you guys if you like this episode if you have a girlfriend that you really think could benefit from hearing some strong opinions that 
that Lindsay offered to us, please share it along. Um, give us a rating to help boost our SEO. That would be a wonderful birthday present to us. Um, we are celebrating our two year anniversary in October. So thank you so much for being part of this community. If you want to uh, see some fun content, you can head on over to Instagram. We just started at hashtag single pod. Please follow, join the convo and uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys.